So the absolute madman has gone and done it again. So a few years ago, Dylan A. Rabbits made a terminal file manager by the name of FFF, which was basically an excessively minimal terminal file manager containing really the absolute essential for what a file manager needs to even be considered a file manager. And it had one problem with being excessively minimal, and that was the fact that it was written in Bash. So why not go and remake the application, but this time make it in POSIX shell script? And that's what we're looking at today. So this is an application called SHFM, and if you've used FFF before, it's a very similar sort of application. So going along with the theme of being excessively minimal, the dependencies are exactly the same. So to actually run this, you need to have a POSIX shell installed, or some sort of shell that can run POSIX scripts. So basically, anything that isn't fish, conch or powershell will probably work so if you have say dash or you have zsh or bash installed any of those are going to be perfectly fine and also you need to have printf dd and stty installed which literally every system that even attempts to be posix compliant so linux running gnu utils not even posix compliant at all but slightly trying or openbsd or mac os is going to have these installed by default so as you would expect from a lot of these minimal terminal file managers, they're bound in a very similar way. So we can move around with the Vim style keys. So J to go down, K to go up, L to go into a directory, and then H to leave that directory. We can also press G to go to the top and capital G to go to the bottom. Now, I don't actually have this few folders inside of my home directory, but by default, it's going to be hiding all of the hidden files and hidden directories. So if you want to go and show those, all we need to do is press the period key and that will then show them. That also shows the links to actually go to the current folder and to the folder above as well. But you can always just press H to go to the previous folder. You don't actually need to go and use that. And like any decent file manager, if we go and press slash, it's going to prompt us to do a search. So this actually does search in kind of an interesting way. Now, unlike something like say LF, where when you do a search, you can then cycle through the search by pressing a key and then it'll cycle you through the entire list jumping to the thing that actually matches your search. This one just shows you a filtered list of the things that match your search. So it's a little bit easier to work out what you've actually searched for. So let's go into the script folder and I'll show you what I mean. So if we say search for something like D here, as you can see, it just shows the things that have D in their name. And honestly, I kind of wish that more file managers actually did it like this. I feel like this is a massive improvement. We can also jump to any arbitrary point in our file system. So if we go and press the colon key, it will prompt us to do a CD. Now, sadly, there's no way to do any tab completion with this. And I've noticed that if you actually do press tab, even if you go and delete the tab character, it might actually break your search. So go back and delete that and then type in pictures. Okay, it's going to work now, but for some reason it wasn't working earlier. So I'm not entirely sure what causes that to break. It seems to be some weird edge case that isn't showing up now. If you want to jump back to home, you can obviously use that last command we just used, so the colon, and then put in a tilde that will jump you back to your home. There's actually a quicker way to do that as well. So let's go back into pictures, and if you just go and press the tilde key directly, that is also where to jump back to home instead. Now, one other interesting thing you can do is if you go and press the minus key, it will jump you between the current and the previous folder. So if I press minus, it will take us back to pictures. Minus again, it will take us back to home. And it's not just with the home directory. So let's go, say, into my documents here and then jump over to, say, my pictures. If I spell it correctly and press minus again. And that will jump us back and forth between documents and pictures. Now, when I say this is excessively minimal, I mean even more so than something like FFF. So I wouldn't even really call this a file manager now that I think about it. It's more akin to a glorified LS. Because if you want to go do things like, say, I don't know, delete a file, make a file, basically anything besides opening a file, what you need to do is go and press the exclamation mark, and then that will take you into another shell. So you can go and do something like an RM or a touch here. So let's just do, I don't know, touch file, and then we go exit. It will take us back to the application, and now the file should be in here if we actually leave and come back in, because it doesn't actually redraw it properly. <laughs> so there we go. Now we have the file here. Now, really, there's only one option when you're actually using this application. So we can actually go run SHFM and then pass in a directory. So let's say we want to open it up inside of my pictures. And as we can see, that does that. Now, one thing you may have noticed is when I actually quit out of the application there, it actually showed us the path we were just in. So if I go and quit this now, as we can see, it shows the full path from where we just quit from. 
Now, the interesting thing here is this makes it really, really easy to do a CD on exit. So what if instead of running it by itself, we did something like, say, this instead. So running SHFM being evaluated inside of a CD command. So what this is going to do is when we go and quit out of the application, so let's go into my scripts and go into ulcer. Once we quit out of this, it's actually going to CD us into that directory. So you could go and make a shell alias or a shell function, call it SHFM, and then every single time you run the application, once you quit out of it, it's going to CD you into your working directory. Or, you know, you could do something like, say, SHFM, and then redirect the file path into, like, I don't know, a file in your home directory called SHFM or something like that. And then when you quit out of the application, what it's going to do is basically just save that path inside of that file. And then after that, if you want to do any sort of processing on it, like, I don't know, keep a list of frequently visited directories or something like that, then that's very simple to do. So I didn't show you the file opening earlier, but the way it's going to work is basically try to put any single file you try to open up inside of your editor. So in my case, my editor is set to NeoVim, so it's going to open up text files perfectly fine. But if I say try to open up, you know, a picture, it's going to open it up, but like this is not very useful for me. So what you can do is modify an environment variable called shfm opener. So let's go into my dshm file. Obviously, if you're in bash, you'd want to do this in something like your bash profile. So if we do just export, if I uh, spell it correctly, export, and then shfm underscore opener, what you pass into this is the script you're going to be using as an opener. On the GitHub page, they actually have a couple of examples. So it's pretty straightforward how it works. Either you can work out the file type based on the extension, or if you would prefer, you can also base it on the MIME type. They'll both work pretty much the same, so it doesn't really matter which one you choose. And pretty much what's happening here is there's a case statement, and if it's this case, then run it with MPV. If it's this case, do it with MPV again, but in a different way. This case is GIMP, so on and so forth. Obviously, you don't have to do it like this if you don't want to, but these will serve basically any purpose you want. Now, I don't think you should actually run this as your day-to-day -day file manager, but if you really want to, the option is here. And there is someone who does seem to want to do so. So if we go into the issues here, we'll see there's actually one person asking about image previews because that's the one feature this is missing that they actually want from FFF. So FFF, it doesn't have inline previews, but if you go and click on an image, it will show you what the image actually looks like inside of your terminal, which is kind of cool. But that's not really the point of this application. The point of this application was to see what was actually possible with POSIX shell script because it is highly restrictive what you can actually do with this. And I really suggest reading the implementation details because there's a lot of hacks that had to be done to basically get this working at all. So for example, we have things like how the curse position is tracked. So as it says here, the curse position is tracked manually. Grabbing the current curse position can't be done reliably from POSIX shell. Instead, the cursor starts at 0, 0, and each movement modifies the value of a variable relative to Y position in screen. This variable is how the file manager knows which line on the screen the cursor is on. Or say how multi-byte input is handled by a so-called 2D case statement. If nothing else, this application is a fun experiment to see what can actually be done if you have enough effort to deal with POSIX shell script. And to my surprise, the application actually ended up being pretty short. Obviously, being a file manager, it's longer than a lot of other scripts you'll use, but it's only a couple hundred lines. So let's check exactly how many it was. So it is currently 425 lines, but there's also lines you could delete like this one here. And obviously there's comments as well. So you could probably compress this down to maybe, you know, 380 lines, which is actually really impressive for what it is. And on that note, because it's just a shell script, if you want to go and use this, basically just pull the GitHub down, take the script out, put it wherever you normally put scripts, and then you'll be good to go. So on that note, I think that's pretty much everything for me. There's no way to go and do things like configure the key bindings or anything like that. But because it's just such a short shell script, it shouldn't really be that difficult to go and actually work out, you know, exactly how to go and do any of that if that's what you want to go and do. So before I go... I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald Kubinian, Andre Nathan, David Montezar, Will, Chico Bender, Joseph Mitchell, Peter D, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you want to go support my welcome links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave a pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available 
basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.